To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. Friends, for the shareholder of B Limited, what is the worth of share? That's the question what I am trying to uh, analyze here. What is the worth of each share of that selling company? To know the value of share, there is a way in which you have to think about it. The first preferred value is that of agreed upon value. What is the best value or most preferred value? Agreed upon value. Something like A and B discuss and say, hey, forget about everything. A's share value is 100 rupees, B's share value is 70 rupees. A and B agree upon that. Well, that's the most preferred value that we have to consider. Right. Now, what if that is not given? Friends, please pay, pay attention to this. You have to first search for that. If it is not given, then you will talk about the next one. If that kind of an agreed upon value is not given, then you will look for something called as market value. What is the meaning of market value? Say A limited and B limited are listed in the stock market and they are traded in the stock exchange. So they have a quoted price. So the market value, the value at which they are bought and sold in the stock market, that value can be a reasonable, reliable value. But listen carefully. In the question, if you have agreed upon value as B is one share is equal to 70 and you have listed price of B's share is 60, which one will you take? Don't say higher of the two or lower of the two. That's the point. You should first prefer the agreed upon price. If agreed upon price is not given in the question, then you will come to something called as market value. We also call this as extrinsic price. Listen to this word carefully. This sometimes we keep seeing in the uh, study material and practice manual. Extrinsic price, extrinsic value means external value. So first you are trying to have or find the agreed upon value. Will you compute agreed upon value? No, agreed upon value should be given to you in the question. You will search for it. Second, if agreed upon value is not there, what is the next best thing? Market value. Market value will you compute? No, you will not compute. So under any examination condition, obviously that market value has to be given in the examination question. So market value should also be searched and found from the question paper. Then fine, market value is also not given. Then what? If market value is also not given, then we compute something called as intrinsic value. We calculate something called as intrinsic value. What is the meaning of intrinsic value? For a moment, I will just call it as a value which is computed internally by taking some inputs externally. What? What is this confusing definition? Value computed internally based on taking some inputs from external world. What kind of valuation is this? Friends, listen carefully. I told you one thing. When A is buying B, A is actually purchasing the net assets of B. I told you this point. Here, in case of agreed upon value, basically we agreed upon that valuation and that, that value transaction is happening. Otherwise, if that is not available in the second preference, that market value is happening. Then how does this intrinsic value calculation happen? Friends, concentrate completely on what I'm talking. There is a balance sheet. In the balance sheet, there are different assets. One of those assets, say, is a building, right? Okay, this is a building. Now, what you would do in intrinsic valuation is take this building and search in the market. Ma, building, building, what is the value what this building can fetch? Or it is plant and machinery. Plant and machinery. What is the value it can fetch in the market? You will try checking with different people what is the reasonable value what this asset could fetch. So if I sell this, how much could I get? We will try to ascertain a value like that. Based on the value what we get for our asset, asset which is in our balance sheet, based on the value what we get from the outside world for our asset, we will say, oh, looks like this is the worth what we can get for our assets. Then come to the liabilities. You look at the liabilities and you will not sell liabilities, right? So you'll have to settle liabilities. So don't say simply sell. So assets, if we sell them off, if we dispose them off, how much can we get from the market is what we will compute. For liabilities, we will talk about 
at what value this liability is need settlement so by taking assets minus liabilities i showed you in that balance sheet assets minus liabilities will be equal to shareholders funds so you will take assets at their market values realizable values and liabilities at their settlement values you will subtract asset value minus liability value that will be the total intrinsic value of business chartered accountants concentrate what am i saying intrinsic value of business not just share now that is attributable to all shareholders that is attributable to all shareholders so from that you would say oh this much is for preference oh this is for equity shareholders in that if you divide by total number of equity shares you will get value per share we will do all these problems don't worry so basically you are doing this kind of internal external calculation only when the first two are not available at the cost of repetition let us go back to the concept first you are looking for agreed upon price if that is not available you are looking at the market price for share if market price of share is not available you are trying to compute intrinsic value per share if intrinsic value has to be computed what do you need compulsorily you need the balance sheet if you don't have balance sheet you can't calculate the intrinsic value right balance sheet and also sometimes there is balance sheet given but for those assets what is the value at which you can sell that is not given so all those special points we are going to talk as we come to those calculations fine third one is intrinsic value then sir sir what if we don't know how to calculate intrinsic value in that case for some reason we are unable to calculate intrinsic value because balance sheet is incomplete or because of some reasons friends at that point we will have to probably assume such cases generally don't happen probably for exam purpose we cannot write in the exam and say oh insufficient information you can't come back you will have to solve the problem right so in such cases probably you can take something like whatever is the paid up value you can take that to be the value per share etc and write a note and you have to continue with the problem right friends we got a broad understanding of how to choose more than find how to choose the right value per share now why is it important whenever we talk about purchase consideration the most common mistake that happens is people will mix up two things how much to settle how to settle these are two different subjects i am repeating how much to settle how to settle these are two different subjects and right, treat them separately find them separately then the answer what you get will be you know definitely correct how much to settle if you if this is the question then your answer for that would be the number of shares in the old company or selling company into the worth per share based on the methods what we spoke whether it is agreed upon market intrinsic whatever so the number of shares into that value will give you oh totally this much we have to settle to the shareholders of old company we will understand that so first you need clarity on how much to settle right after you get clarity on how much to settle then come that come to the next one how to settle are we giving equity shares of new company are we giving preference shares of new company all those things if we are giving equity shares of new company then are we giving equity shares at par value face value are we giving them at premium so based on that how many shares have to be given so friends this is the separate aspect this is the next aspect how much to settle how to settle so keep remembering these points reminding yourself about these and trust me amalgamation is a super interesting concept what we have in our accounting and compulsorily you will have you know more or less you will have a question from this and you would love to solve problems from amalgamation